Hello, hello, hello. This is Attorney Mike Gravel coming to you from Chicago. As usual, we've got a live one, people. Secret headquarters of the Sovereign Citizen Patrol. Initiating video production sequence. We are no longer playing. So let's get revved up. It's time for Law Talk with Mike. All right, Mr. Williams, you ready for your case? Okay, I was about to say, he's supposed to be here. You can just stand right there. Yeah, that's fine. All right. That way. All right. Now you're going to have to speak up real loud because it's all online. And so I'm, they're going to need to be able to hear you. Okay. Should I try to move that? Over? Yeah, can we move it over a little bit? I'm gonna try and move it over some. You see this little green thing right there? Can you try to move it over? Some? All right, that way. Yeah. Try to move it as close to them. Uh -oh. It ain't gonna move it. Uh -oh. Um, what about? Let me see. No, it I thought it was. Where does mine go? Oh, would that move closer? Can you in, my... in the middle of them? Let's see how long mine will go. Put it on the table. Yeah, put table it on the chair. Table. All right. Hopefully that helps pick it up a little bit more. I have a right. finger. Yes. I hope I'm in the right place. After I call them. Yeah, just one of them. Yeah, just one. Excuse me, one of them? Yeah. Now calling ticket number SP1466801. Ticket SP1418401. Ticket SP1411848, SP1283888, SP1452301, SP1467130, ticket SX2454328, ticket, ticket SP1409982. And so SP1409983 and SP1283889. Appearances for the record, starting with counsel for the people, please. For the record, Your Honor, good morning. Nia Chiku Mason, City of Detroit Law Department, 43471. All right. And Mr. Uh, Williams, can you state your name for the record, please? Timothy is standing before the court as a state citizen and a U.S. citizen. Okay. My nationality is American Indian. Standing as the people. Is that your full name? What's your full name? <laughs> All right, Timothy Williams. All right, and sir, you know you have the absolute right to have an attorney. You understand that? Uh, are you foregoing that right today? Represent myself. You're representing yourself. Do you understand that um, because some of these are misdemeanors, uh, constitutional rights kick in, such as fines going up to $500, possible jail time up to 30 days. And that's why uh, they advise or offer you the opportunity to have an attorney, but you're not wishing to have that attorney today. Is that correct, sir? Correct. Okay, make sure you keep your voice up really, really loud, okay? Um, and today is your motion um, so I'll let you start by uh, providing what you want to start as far as your motion for why I don't have jurisdiction over these particular matters. Oh, we're in the right place. Go ahead. 
<laughs> oh, uh, I submitted a, a affidavit of non-existent corporation to the Corporation Council, uh, Alexa Schneider. Okay, she's not she's not here. You can see it. Attorney Mason. All right, but state state your reasons why I don't have jurisdiction. Well, the state of Michigan Constitution states that Article One, Section Nine. Uh, the bills of retainers is unlawful. Section nine, slavery and uh, voluntary service rule. And ex post facto laws. Uh, it's just, it just states that I don't need a driver's license, registration, or insurance to travel within the state. So that's. What, what case does it say that in, that you don't need to drive? Uh, Michigan, Michigan uh, Constitution, Article 1, Section 9 and 10, Clause 3. It's in the Michigan was, Constitution. Yeah, of 1963. Judge, I'm sorry, breaking up. Is it possible he could come closer to that microphone that you said? It helps. The microphone helps, but I know. It's um, no. Article one, section nine, ten, clause three. Okay, so you said Article Michigan Constitution. Article. Article one, section nine, ten, clause three. Nineteen. It was obtained and it's unlawful. Such as ex post facto law. Section 19 says in all prosecutions for libels, the truth may be given in evidence to the jury. And if it appears to the jury that the matter charged as libelous is true and was published with good motives and for justifiable ends, the cube shall be acquitted. That Article One, Section Nine and Ten. Oh, I thought you said clause. Section Nineteen. No, no, no. Okay. You see, you're not speaking up loud enough for me to hear. Section Nine and Ten, Clause Three. Nine. Slavery and involuntary servitude. In the state Neither of state nor involuntary servitude, unless for the punishment of crime, shall be tolerated in the state. What slavery am I asking you to do right now? Uh, the state, state of Michigan is trying to convert my right to a good privilege, trying to force me into a contract. You don't have to get a license, but if you're stopped in a car while you're driving, it's a rule of the state of Michigan that you have to have a license to drive. You know, you do not ever have to get a license ever but if you drive a vehicle the constitution affords each state and municipality the opportunity to create laws to protect people i get it the, the statutes is to enforce law correct and the constitution is to uphold the lawful law that's right and the citizens have a right to travel throughout the state you can travel on a bicycle on your feet on a bus if you do not want to get a license, the license is created so that you have the opportunity to know that you understand what the rules and the traffic signals mean. So that, because this is what happens. And I, I'm, I, the court gets to interpret why certain laws are put into place. Because if incidents happen where people don't have licenses and don't have uh, the ability for us to track that person driving, then what you're gonna do is sue the state of Michigan because you're gonna say they should have had something in place. I comprehend what you're saying, but section 10 say. Let me look at section 10. Yeah. Okay. It says no bill of a tenders, tenders. tenders ex post facto law or laws impairing the obligation of contracts shall be enacted. Meaning, state of Michigan, I force contracts amongst citizens. We, we have a right, Absolutely. a constitutional right 
for travel out in no. an automobile. Yeah, not a, not no, a, it doesn't say in an automobile. Where in the Constitution does it say you have the right to travel in an automobile? Our constitutional right is that life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. That's right. We travel in an automobile. Not no, 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 no. Tell me where in the Constitution it says that Shapiro, you can have an automobile. Shapiro versus Thompson. Shapiro have, versus Thompson. Shapiro versus Thompson. We have a right to travel. What states? Jurisdiction is jurisdiction. You do. I agree. Listen, I'm not, I'm not denying you there. have the right to travel. You can travel in the state of Michigan and in any state that I'm aware of in order to travel and ride in your own vehicle. Automobile. You have to have automobile, vehicle, car, whatever it is. If you want to physically get behind the wheel and drive it, you have to have a driver's license. I'm not saying you can't travel. You can travel as much as you want on the road. But a minute ago, you said, I don't have to have a driver's license. You don't. But if you want to get behind a vehicle and drive it yourself personally, you have to have a license. You don't have to. Listen, you don't have to do anything you don't want to do. But if you choose to, then certain things kick in as rights that the states and municipalities and governments have to enforce the rules as long as they've been found not unconstitutional, it's not unconstitutional. Remember, we can have stricter laws in the states. They can't violate federal laws, but they can be stricter. And each state has decided, and I was talking about the state of Michigan, the state of Michigan has decided in order for you to drive an automobile, a car, a vehicle, that you have to have a license. For business, yes, yeah, correct. You want business, uh, commerce. No. Taxi cabs, Uber. No, because they have different type of licenses in the state of Michigan, too. So they have a specific license if you want to do commerce. There are different licenses. So driver's licenses, say, there are different levels to them. So yes, for business. If it was only a business license, I would get you. You only need one for business. But on the driver's license, that's not what it says. But I'll let you continue your argument, and then I'll let her have her response, Madam uh, Prosecutor. So I'll let her. Okay. Respond, Your Honor. I would, I would agree with the court on that. I would also kind of reiterate that it is a privilege to drive. It is not a right to drive. It is a privilege. Uh, I object, with the Your Constitution. Honor. I object. No, she didn't object, Your Honor. Your statement. I object. To what? She used, the, word, she used the term drive, travel. Travel. Can you use the word travel, please? Can you find the word drive? Driving is getting into an is getting into a vehicle and moving it under the power of an engine or under the power of an engine on public highways, streets, and freeways. And the, the definition of travel is going to point A to point B. You know, and again, and not driving the Excuse commerce. me, I'm not finished with my argument. I allowed you to proceed and I expect you to give me that same courtesy. Okay, thank you. Also, there's a rational basis that the Supreme Court has articulated when it comes to the Constitution. The fact that, I'm sorry, I'm looking at him instead of the court, Your Honor. Um, rational basis for, the, for our rules and regulations. And that is for the security and the safety of the public and the public welfare for people. And that's why- Hold on, no, no, no. We're not gonna play the interruption game. This is not the interruption game. I'm giving you an opportunity to respond, but while she's talking, we're not gonna interrupt her and say under what law, okay? Go ahead, Attorney Mason. So there's a rational basis which the Supreme Court has articulated in cases that show that they have a right to, re to, to regulate certain types of activities among the people in the United States. And so a rational basis is the security and the protection of people regarding driving multi-vehicle, heavy vehicles upon its public highways, roads, freeways. And I believe that he does not have an unfettered right. You just don't have an unfettered right uh, without any type of regulation to travel in a vehicle on the public highways, freeways, roads in the city of Detroit, the county of Wayne, the state of Michigan, and the United States of America. I also believe that this court does have jurisdiction, which has been given to it through the state of Michigan, through uh, the state constitution, which gives and creates the judicial, the legislative, and the executive branches, and through the powers of the federal constitution, which comes down and grants that power to the 36th district court. 
In addition, Your Honor, based upon Mr. the citation provided to Mr. Williams, he has pretty much relegated himself to this jurisdiction when he did get his license, which ends, which starts with the letter W-452-793-785-529. He lives within the jurisdiction of this city, which uh, the address is, if I can make that out, 19419 Rosemont Avenue in Detroit, Michigan. So he has uh, subjected himself to the jurisdiction of this state, of this city, and this county. Thank you. Did you have a response, sir? Yes, yeah, so I'm not a U.S. citizen, and the ID she told me I never have a driver's license. And the ID the council since 2018. I am not a resident of U.S. I'm U.S. A citizen, state citizen, state of the union citizen, not a U.S. Okay, citizen. so if you're not, and this is proof that I never had a driver's license. Okay, state state. so you use the Constitution, and I read your brief. Use Constitution, uh, the United States 13. What about? 14. I said, what about the 14th Amendment? You talked about incited in your stuff, the 13th Amendment. Amendment about slavery. But then, so the Constitution applies to, correct? The United States of America Constitution applies. Correct. Okay. So the 14th Amendment states. For the 14th Amendment. You had state citizens that after the 14th Amendment, you, that's when they created U.S. citizens. Okay, so you already know it says all persons, persons born person. or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and of the states in which they reside. How do we deal with that? I'm not a U.S. citizen. I'm a state citizen. But they said all persons born or naturalized. Naturalized means that you just come here. That's not what that means. I have no contracts with the state of Michigan. Just because you don't want to have it doesn't mean it's it not doesn't about exist. Not we follow the constitution. You took yes, the constitution, I, right? Listen, it says no state. At first, it goes on to say no state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States, nor should any state, nor should any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of the law. Right. So With this the law, is the law is, of the land, which this is, is supreme due, so rulings. Here's the due process of the land, though. If you didn't commit these offenses, you have a trial. That's what due process is. But I submitted a denial of corporation. This court has no jurisdiction. I have no contract with the state, what's a, the state of Michigan whatsoever. You don't, okay. So the fact that you say you don't have contract doesn't make that not true. And we're not talking about contracts. We are right. simply, you're not a corporation, you're a human. If these tickets were written against your corporation, that would be different. This it is, is against against a the, human being that I against, can see physically in front of me right now. You can see me, but the paperwork don't see me. They, that's a council ID from 2018. That's a dead entity. Listen, and it's a council ID, but they found you all while you were driving behind a vehicle, a Chrysler 2006 white vehicle at East Davidson and Mount Elliott, a Cadillac vehicle in the area of Midden and Gunston, a uh, GMC vehicle in the area of East Jefferson and Garland Streets. Yeah, the Chrysler no and that, that, you just had those three vehicles, it looks like. You know, I post no to the community. And I, I travel. Well, I'm state. not saying, but you have to follow what the laws of this city are. Follow the law of the land. Supreme Court ruling, Shapiro versus Thompson. Okay, we read, right to read to me what it's saying. Because the constitutional right to free movement between states was implicated, the court applied a standard of strict scrutiny and held none of these interests were sufficient to sustain the way we were. Uh, the court held that there was no evidence that the requirement would make planning a budget more predictable than we get to the point. 
Finally, finally, the court rejected the argument that Congress had authority. Wait. I'm sorry. Okay. Finally, the court rejected the argument that Congress had authorized the waiver period because Congress does not have the power to authorize violations of equal protection law. And the equal protection clause is. And what is that case referring to? Though? The right to travel. The right to travel. Was it in a vehicle? Automobile. Automobile, was it in an automobile? And further, the court reaffirmed that the right to travel under the 14th Amendment, privileges and immunities clause, and Suez versus Rose, 1999. Right. And this so, is held by the Supreme Court. So the right to travel in an automobile, that's what it was talking about in that case? No, the first one. How else versus you Shapiro. travel about the huh? How else did you travel about the No, no, no. No. You tra didn't say how exercise. else do you travel? Didn't say no, 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 no. How else do you travel? Tell me, there, tell me the means of transportation that we have in the United States of America. And I want you to tell me every means. We have trains. Automobiles. We have planes. We have bicycles. We have buses. We have luxury coaches. We have, we have the RV motor vehicles. We have tractor trailers. We have legs. Automobiles. That we have, we have automobiles. So what specifically in there does it say that the right to travel only applies to automobiles? No, not only. Of course okay. Not. Of course not. So it doesn't say you have the right to travel only if you use this means. It says you have the right. If I tell you you can't go someplace, that you can't have the right to travel, you can't leave at all. Either you must be in prison or you must be on probation. And I'm having some type of authority that leads me to do that. I can't stop you at any point from time today. If you want to walk out and go to another state, you can. But you have to use a means that you're able to use. And once you go behind the seat of a car and vehicle and you use it to travel, because I'm not stopping you from traveling. Because you can get there. It may not be by the way that you want to get there, but you, and it doesn't say in there that it's by the way that you want to get there. It says, if I stop you, there are many means by which you can get to where you want to go. But if you take the opportunity to get behind the wheel of a vehicle, you now subject yourself to the rights and privileges of those no, who have a This argument has life. never worked. Under what law? Under the law of the United States of America, passed down to the state of Michigan, passed down to the municipality to create laws and regulations to help with the protection of society. Authorized by the and 10th I told Amendment. You the reason why, and I don't know exactly, I haven't read the legislative intent, but I'm imagining it was twofold to protect society from one another and at least give us some type of skills. Now I know you have the skills or maybe you should possess the skills to know what traffic signs are, to know what speed limit signs are, to understand what all of those things are and probably also to help with the liability because if there were accidents and nobody was held liable because I don't have to have anything, well then who's in trouble? The individuals, yes. But then they're gonna say, but you let us do this. And you fix the roads and you created roads and paths for us to be able to travel on or traverse on or to drive on or to move about on. And now it's your responsibility to govern these roads. I have to object to that. Nothing you said is in law. Like that's, that's not constitutional. It's the law. It's the, the 14th Amendment is what I'm standing on. Anything what about the versus US Michigan, US. So this is the Constitution of the United States of America that I read. Okay. That is the 14th Amendment of the United States of America Constitution. But you asked the laws of Michigan, right? Which is the which one is it? Do you want the laws of Michigan or do you want the laws of the United States of America? It's the same thing. Exactly. No, 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 no. no, no. Sir, sir, Mr. Mr. No, Williams, no. you are no. here today. I, let me say, let me say, no, I think, okay, with the I argument, think both of us we, we, no, I, I I'm not misinformed, Mr. Williams, you came today because your name means something to you, and you have all these tickets, and you would like to resolve them at some point in time, because your name means something to you, and the fact that you have these matters out here, 
means something to you. Because otherwise, you would do what everybody else does who believes in this stuff, and they would just not show up and just be like, whatever, because it doesn't apply to me. But your name means something, and you want to take care of these. You, even if you're not traveling, one of your tickets, ticket SP14-18401, count one of that ticket is open alcohol in a motor vehicle driver. Would you like to at least address that ticket? Well, people want to see an old bottle in the back seat, so from... And so, so you hear it, Mr. Williams? You can address these tickets, right? Because that's a ticket that don't have to do nothing with you driving at that point in time. That's a ticket in the state of Michigan that you're saying that the traveling, you weren't traveling at that point in time. It's just a ticket about what's going on in that vehicle that you own and you have. So how do we address? And that's my, that's my. Just traveling with alcohol, Judge. Confusion, but that's my, my point where I need clarity. How do we address those tickets if you say that the rest of them, how do we address tinted windows? It's a private automobile. There's nothing wrong with it. What about seatbelts? How do you see I have a seatbelt on by a tinted window? So you come and you want to talk about the travel and the rights, so you just want to do whatever you want to do. Absolutely not. Okay. Because why don't you want to do whatever you want to do? You know why? I'm relying on the UA, U.S. Supreme Court rulings, so I can't be charged mm -hmm. willfully just driving around like I'm really relying on law. Right. I'm not just out here willy nilly right. doing what I want to do. That's right. Not so what about let's move on to another ticket? What about your insurance? If it's so important to you that you can drive with your car and everything, why is your car not insured? Something happened to happen. That's freaking nature. That's Me and the other citizen will. So, Mr. Woods, if I just decide I don't want to have it and then somebody gets critically injured and they sue you for their, for their people's injuries, because that's what is happening. There's never enough resources. That's not the point here. Okay. That's not the point. So, why don't you have the, well, not the insurance? Okay, another alcohol. One of the words. Three. Let's say the same day. Let me check. Yeah, that's something right. Your Honor, I, with all due respect, I think my other courtroom is. Okay, your other courtroom. All right. I, you know, unless you can show me how the 14th Amendment of the United States of America Constitution, I'm going to print it out to you. The student, she just explained to you how you have jurisdiction. Nothing she said was true. I Just because you say it's not true. I never had a driver's license. Okay, you don't have, which makes it even worse because you can't drive. She said I have a driver's license. Okay, you don't have a driver's license. You had a Michigan State ID, correct? Which was canceled. Okay, which was canceled a long time ago. So you don't have a driver's license. Okay, you don't have a driver's license. Okay, which was canceled a long time ago. So you don't have a driver's license. Am I correct? I have a state passport. Okay, so you don't have a driver's license. 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 You Okay, where is it? She haven't reached out to the DOS or federal court to get the United States of America. Of America, not so, the United States. So the 14th Amendment applies to you. Let me print out the 14th Amendment of the United States. And you can go to your back to your courtroom attorney face. Thank you. Donna, which nothing she said has been. I, I don't know. Let me, I'm gonna print this out and I'm gonna let you sit there and read over well, it. Right. Because now you're showing me that you are abiding by the Constitution of the United States of America by getting this passport. Am I correct? That is a correct, that's a wonderful passport. I love it because it allows you to travel internationally, locally, and everything, and go about any way that you need to get there. And let's drive it in the state of Michigan. Yeah, that's it. Come on, right? Yep. Yep, yeah, that's fine. Just sit there and read that. Off the record in this motion for a moment. Ready on the other matter, Attorney Boffman? State prosecutor. Okay. Did you talk to the state prosecutor, Attorney Boffman, on this matter? Yeah, you can leave that there. Just, just go ahead.
Oh, this is rich. I mean, it's it's questionable whether or not this guy can read. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good lord! <clears throat> attorney Bachman, did you talk to the attorney now on the APA? We can go through all the issues for the billionth time, but I won't. They're all wrong. That's the um, APA Alex Wieringa just um, came. He came in the um, courtroom when we were on the record. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I, I agree. I think I think the judge had had a light call and thought, you know, that this will be fun. We'll, we'll we'll spend a little time with it. All right for the for the two of you that don't know this, the right to travel refers to you, that one state can't hold you up from going to another state. So they're in Michigan, say the state of Indiana or Ohio can't say, all right, you got you can't come here unless you pay us, uh, you know, a thousand dollars at the border. That that makes all the sense in the world. That's what the right to travel in the Constitution refers to. And that, that makes sense. The one the one that is not brought up here, the most important one is the Tenth Amendment of the Constitution uh, leaves it to the states to regulate things um, such as this. But I'm even boring myself. Let, let's not. He's just wrong. <laughs> no, these arguments never win. I had the question earlier. Never, ever. People point out sometimes prosecutors get tired and pitch the charge. Well, that happens all the time or they don't have a witness. But the, these arguments never win on the merits of the argument because they are wrong. Period. End of statement. Forgive me if I'm interrupting. Mr. Wairinga. Is this the defense attorney who's going to attempt to tell him to shut his hole? Because <laughs> that's what needs doing here. Look at him pretending to read this and, and and care. He 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 does not have. Well, I shouldn't say that. He may or may not have the intellectual ability to appreciate how wrong he is, but he's not interested in it. He's in his emotions. He's he's found some some BS and fallen for it that justifies him doing whatever the hell he wants. He can drink, no insurance, tint all over the place, and drive any damn way he likes according to his view of the Constitution. Of course, it's not in there. The Supreme Court has never uh, interpreted the Constitution in that way. But that's what he wants to think, and that's what he's going to think. This is like telling a three-year-old that their sixth cookie is not a good idea. You're right, but they don't want to hear it. Well, you know what? This this is why it's good. I think we need a little. I think we need a little something to you know while he reads some reading music, shall we say? Oh yes.
Maybe the cat jumped on a swing. Can you just let this go for one? For one? One? Okay, bad doing no. Mr. Weiringer, are you there? Yes. I'm sorry to be so soft-spoken. No worries. Can I? Uh, can we go to breakout room number two? Do I need to put you in there? Yes, sounds good. All right, I'll put you in right now, and I'll see you there. Thank you. No problem. Press join. Well, it looks like they, he gets called back up. So let me let me move it along to there. That I just wanted to check on, and then can he come up closer? Then because I oh, terrible. So security. I need, it's, it's based on security in the courtroom, Miss Sandy. So, All right. can he step a little? Well, if he could speak a little. Step back down there. Oh, look, he's got his papers he full of stupid. Coming over here to the other one. <laughs> I'll spread out. All right. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Back on the record in the people versus Timothy Williams. Mr. Williams, say your name real loud for me. Timothy. All right. What's your last name? Williams. Thank you, Mr. Williams. All right. <laughs> Mr. Williams, did you have an opportunity to look over the 14th Amendment I gave you? Yes, I did. And once again, this don't pertain. They say all oh, persons born or naturalized. I'm not a person. I'm a live human being. Okay. All right. Oh, you have any final okay, words you before I make my ruling? No. The case is dismissed. The current prosecutor that came and said what she said, I served the former the, prosecutor. The former prosecutor. You did. I saw that you served it. Even if she taken her place, she's still honoring the same oath as elected. That's right. Family. So I served a default and noticed a cure, and I haven't got a response. Yeah. The, the default. So I asked you to file a very specific motion, Mr. Williams. It was to challenge. I said to challenge jurisdiction. The last time you were here, you wanted to challenge jurisdiction. And I wanted you to be able to challenge jurisdiction. You can't challenge whatever you like, whatever it is. So the court's going to find that you are a, in accordance, especially because you you have you say that you operate under the Constitution. Well, the Constitution it's all of it. It's not the parts we want to choose. Well, we got separation of powers. I'm under judicial jurisdiction. I, I am judicial say. jurisdiction. What you judicial? I'm a jurisdiction? judge. So you're an Article Three judge. I'm a judge under the Constitution. Like so I'm a judge. So, 
So, so I've taken the oath to follow the Constitution of the United States, more particularly the Constitution of the the city of Detroit and the state of Michigan. That's those are the things you do have to follow. The and facts of what Michigan State. Okay, so who has authority over you then? Judicial, not legislature. Okay. All right. So. I'm gonna rule that I do have authority over you for these tickets. What's the next action that you wanna take? Do you wanna have a jury trial on these matters where we have citizens decide? You can argue all of this that you wanna argue with the exception of jurisdiction because I'm you ruling today that I have jurisdiction over you. I understand, but it's like, how do you have jurisdiction over Because under the constitution, it gives the powers to the three parts, you're right. So we have, we have the, the judiciary, the legislator, and the president, right? So in, in the state of Michigan, that would be like our governor, then the legislative branch, then the judicial branch, right? So judicial branch is like the judges. We're the ones who enforce the law that the legislators make. And then the governor's job is to make sure that they represent the state in all matters that take that place and happen. The United States of America, and it's the same power to the legislature to enact laws on persons. You 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 are quoting it exact. You are so intelligent that it's it's you're stating the argument that makes my argument stronger for all of this. You're saying that the legislature is up under judicial, but that's no, I'm saying the legislator creates laws that the judicial they're also when they create the no, constitution, the it was made for checks and balances, <sighs> right? So that no Gothier is right. It, it's time for Schoolhouse Rock again. No one will overrun everybody, right? So it was like the the president, the executive office. I couldn't think of it for the life of me. The executive office operates separately, but has checks and balances from the legislative and the judicial branch, as well as the judicial branch has to follow the legislative orders. But it's through their interpretation that the judicial branch has is that has that and can check legislators as well as we just had a whole bunch of like hearings about all of that. So you're stating it perfectly correct. Yes, Mr. Williams. I comprehend that the legislature create statutes yes. and laws for the persons, for the U.S. citizens. That's I'm not right. A US citizen, I'm <laughs> you, a U.S. citizen. I'm you, a state citizen. Okay. State citizen. But even if you're not a U.S. citizen, then under the 14th Amendment, it states that any per person who comes here and person. enforce themselves person. of it, you whether you... The, the, Mr. Timothy Woods, who's standing before me today with the orange, yellow, looking very nice, button up shirt, you are a person, according to the United States of America Constitution, which you have under your, which you say you have that has jurisdiction over you. Like it makes you a person. You're breathing, you're living, you're walking, you're moving. You have the activity, all of your limbs, your eyes, your ears, your brain is phenomenal. So you are a person according to what these acts and rules need to follow. Acts and rules, not laws. That's my rule. What do you want to do next with this? I would like to enter default judgment. Okay, I'm, motion denied. What do you want to do? Your options are that you can have a bench trial. That's just a trial before me. All the officers would have to appear online or we can have them come in person. And so then I am denying your affidavit, okay? I do a jury trial. Okay, you want jury trial? Okay, let me get you a date. Are you representing yourself or do you want counsel? Okay. Representing myself. Okay. My next jury trial date is it is April 22nd. Let me see. Does that work for you? Okay. April check 22nd. Check your phone and see. Um, I'm open. You open? Okay. So I'm gonna have you come online though. Online on that Friday, just to make sure we're still moving forward. And then it's in person on the 22nd. You see I'll what I'm saying? Like, like huh? Like you come in on the Friday. You want to come in? No, I can't. Not that Friday before. I want one here. Let me see. You can't do online on the 19th? I'll do online. Okay. What is it for? Just to just to make sure that we're going to go to trial 
on that Monday. That won't be necessary to the trial. Well, I have to have a preacher out to make sure though that the people are ready. I mean, it might be because the people have to the people have to be able to make sure that their witnesses are going to come. So it's certain things that need to be put into place okay. just to make sure any jury instructions that you want that are non-standard need to be presented that day as well. Okay. okay? All right. So other than that, we'll set this for that's going to be a bad day. Let me not do that day because I'm just coming back in town. And I know that's not going to. Anything happens, I know you want your day. What about May 6th? Okay, I just want to make sure. You know, I feel like get delayed, and then oh, you'll be you. extra upset with me if I can't move forward that day. So, May 6th, so that Friday before which is May 3rd online, just to make sure we're moving forward. That's all that is. And to make sure that the prosecution or the city can move forward on their case. John, I would like to let y'all know y'all is creating injury. And, and y'all do know y'all have to go before DO, at least DOS to see if y'all jurisdictional. But I'll take the proper steps to do what I need to do because I'm not feeling you to take you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not, listen, I never I never get mad at when people believe I'm not mad but we following, just, you know, I'm because the, they, people, they, they, the people the people want to the people, you know what I'm saying? All we want to do is the right thing, right? But when we got higher ups, it's not really upholding they like I know, older, but I mean, you have to be let me tell you this. And this is this is not about all this. We have to be accountable for ourselves, no matter what everybody else. Is doing That's in this world, about. right? You have to be accountable for yourself. That's you know how many trying. people I see doing stuff that I just be like they shouldn't be doing all the time. But my my set of right and wrong may be different from your set of right and wrong, correct? But there is something. That's why we have these laws, right? So it's written out in black and white so that we can be able to see it, and then. We have the interpretation, as you said, right? The legislative and the judicial department interprets it as well, based on how it's been practiced in the past. But you you can't get caught up in, in looking at all oh, these people, all these people are doing wrong, so why I gotta follow all of this? You're gonna get That's lost down a rabbit hole. What were you talking about then? I'm saying the people that create that catch these tickets, all we wanna do is the right thing, but we're not being informed, like. We try, they try to make us get a driver's license insurance, but they need to let us know if it's voluntary or mandatory. It's mandatory in the state of Michigan. It's required. It's requirement. To right. If you want to drive a vehicle. Exactly. Mr. Williams, I want you to go home and listen to this. You just, you keep saying everything. It's required, right? It's required. required. But it's not lawful. Because? The Michigan Constitution says so. That's involuntary slavery. What's your definition of slavery? Maybe that's where I'm getting lost. Uh, slavery, like the police pull us over. Since you can't pull this gun, I'll put our ass and give me your money. I'm going to give you this ticket and you're going to pay it on. And no. we come here and. No, no, I asked what the definition was of slavery. Making us. Slavery is the create, involuntary. The legislature create persons by. License, registration, insurance, and things of that nature. Too intelligent. I'm trying to. You are so. That's why the Constitution is created. Slavery is the condition in which one human being was owned by another. Right, and y'all, the, the legislature think they own everybody. Persons, they own pieces of paper. They that's don't a, own human beings. That's a, that's a, that's a um, belief. Right, Fact. that's your that's your belief. Article one, right? Section nine, ten, clause three states that I'm not just making it up. State of the U.S. Constitution or the Michigan Constitution. The same thing, U.S. Michigan Constitution, 1963. Right? Say, he said same thing. <laughs> William, stop talking. It's, it's the U.S. The Michigan Constitution. Michigan. Article 1, Section 9 and 
clause three. Right. And then I said, well, slavery and slavery is the, the ownership of one person by another and asking them to do labor right. in order for free. Does slavery access to get a license? Not informing us it's voluntary, not mandatory. So when we do get a license, we guilty before we innocent. When we buy, like when we enter into a contract, we bound by these statutes, which was make us guilty automatically. And that's not how too, that's unlawful. But in the constitution, our God it also says right. innocent until found guilty, right? But not in the constitution. You automatic, you automatically guilty once you enter into oh, a contract. No, 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 you said the constitution. I'm sorry, it's in the Bill of Rights. I correct myself. It's in the Bill of Rights, which is a part of the Constitution, but it's not physically in the Constitution. It is in the Bill of Rights. And I think the Fifth Amendment is what talks about the legal system being fair and unfair. So I'm all right. So what? Um, no, the you're slavery not. Slavery is involuntary no. slavery. So what's no. section 10 say? You're what, saying, what, the, you're saying because you're saying that when they when you and off the record, now I've already read my rule one. You're all set. <laughs> but what, what does it mean? Can you tell me what it means? So so the 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 constitution is and the, the slavery aspect was for them physically owning us, and particularly black indigenous people from the, the continent of Africa, bringing us over, and then after a while, forcing us to procreate and have additional human beings to work fields was giving them no pay, well, slavery, ownership of it's been, it's been branding it's been modernized. them, modernized, because now they ask you to get a license that you don't have to get. If you want to drive a vehicle on the road, correct? Because, and one of the reasons why they do it, because then who's paying for these roads if we don't have no revenue for them? Commerce. Commerce of the businesses. So you should have a license if you want to drive a and truck commerce. and that's it. Oh, over taxi. I don't get it. Help me, Mr. Wood. You just said no, you should only, you should not only have a license because let me tell you what the argument that I'm hearing right now in my head. What I hear you saying is that this is, um, let me see. This is uh, the, who is it? Can you read section 10 from me? Section 10 of the, Article which one? one? Article one, section nine. Well, three. Oh. Keep talking about this bill of attainer. Oh, this is this. Okay, I'm listening. I'm listening. Even if I can't see you. Bill of attainer. Okay. According to Constitution annotated, Congress.gov. A bill of attainder is legislation that imposes punishment on a specific person or group of people without a judicial trial. Right, but I haven't given you any punishment. <laughs> I can see if you pled guilty and I just had you plead guilty and I told you you couldn't have a trial, you can't have nothing. I don't even know if these allegations are true or not. They've just been alleged at this point in time. So it says, if, so that what that is saying essentially is if I say, you come before me today and I say, you did everything they said you did and more. Let me find you. I'm going to give you a $500 fine on it. And you standing there looking at me and you're like, what? And I'm like, I don't care what you say. I'm going to just give you a fine because that's what you 
That's what you get. I mean, look, you're here before me today, so you must have done something wrong. That's what that's saying without giving you the opportunity to be like, oh, hold up a minute. I didn't do anything wrong. I want to fight this. Oh, okay. Well, let me give you the opportunity to fight it. You got to listen to every single word. And if it just says that first part without the end part, okay, I could be like, okay, that's interesting. But what it's saying is that I impose something. I give it to you. Okay, interpret section 10. So what it's saying is that if at all, section 10, let me pull it up again. I thought I had it on my computer. Article 9, section 3, Michigan State Constitution. And great morning. All right. Okay. I am Judge Lynn. Well, great. Welcome to the 36th District Court. You are at the 36th District Court. The general government. Is it under the general government? Under Michigan Constitution. Like Real declarations, base. elections, Real general rights. government, judicial branch. Do the right you just, you just had. Declaration of rights. Do the right. So when I pull up the 1963 Michigan Constitution, this is what it says. Article one. It says section 10. One, section two. Okay. Pardon me. Contracts, no bill of attainment, ex post facto laws, or laws impairing the obligations of contracts should be enacted. Okay. The last part, impairing what? Impairing obligations. Because obligations of contracts should be enacted. What are they talking about? The contracts. This is for bill of attainers aren't for us. Bill of attainers. Bill of attainers is contracts, license, registration. If I purchase a vehicle, it's up to me to either register or keep it private. If I register it, then the government not have that insurance and they get to regulate my private property. Painter, act declaring people, crime punishable, usually without a trial. Right. Once right. you enter a contract, you without automatically, trial. automatically guilty. The state and federal government, that the fact that the ban extends to the states now just shows the importance of those who draft the constitution. The ban enforces the separation of powers by forbidding the legislative branch of government from engaging in judicial and executive acts. The ban supports the concept of due process, one of the rights attributed to the constitution. Each individual state constitution also includes insurances of the attainer. The attainer is for, forbidden by Wisconsin's constitution. The separation of power. It talks about the separation of powers, checks and balances. You just read it's that it keeps the legislation oh, from acting. You know what? This is talking about we, they can't in, individually enter into contracts with like other entities. Like I can't enter into a contract oh, with God. the state of Michigan, can't enter into a contract with another. So you got to read why, because I'm not like, why does it keep talking about separation of powers and stuff like that? Yeah, it so it's talking about, like, you, like you just right, read, right. Acting judicially. So that means that, 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 so that means that the president can't go out here and enact all these deals and stuff with different foreign even, nations even the president is without legislation. With, but I, do you want to know what these, this is about or not? Because you interpret it for what you want. But then you have me. Go, now I got to go online well, it is and look up this favorite. stuff. Right. No. I am the beneficiary. <laughs> no. No. But so the, the important thing. What's, 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 oh, what's, what's that? What's that? You're not speak. What's yes. that? Go ahead. You were in touch with sure. right? Mm -hmm. God created man. Man created government. Government mm -hmm. created corporations. Corporations Correct. created. Corporation, it's, it's impossible for the creation to rule over its creator, right? 
the legislature create persons, like offices of persons. The legislature can't create people. So the legislature somehow persuade living people to enter into this contract, which is a license. I don't uh, have to listen. I have not once told you you had to get a license. I understand, Your Honor, but I'm a usual. You and Southern, right? You work under the judicial. Uh, no, you work yeah, under I'm the judicial. No, I'm under no, no, the legislature. Well, I interpret the acts of the legislator, but I'm under the judicial. You're right. I'm under the judicial branch. And the, our constitutional rights keep government from overstepping. So what gave you power is the constitution, right? And somehow, like you intelligent, it seemed like the legislature like have possessed a lot of the people. And since they possess, they try to possess other people with the legislature power. I mean, but so you give life to the legislature. The legislature don't give life to you. To some extent, so we know that they give us some of our powers, though, right? But your ultimate power comes from the Constitution. It does, but they give us powers as well. Like based on the and laws. If you so if there were the no vote, laws, there if wouldn't be no laws, there wouldn't be no need for judges, right? Right, right. You the vote. And that goes back biblical now. Don't go biblical on me. You don't know this, but I if love you biblical. Vote. Said, well, hold on a second. Let's go biblical. It's <laughs> why not? <laughs> oh, all right. There, there are good reasons why not. Mr. Miss Redling, if you want to listen, uh I can't I can't even enter. I'm sorry, Your Honor. It's okay. I'm just gonna ask you. So no, it's no big deal. I can um go. I need to prepare for my um afternoon class okay. and I apologize for my my uh, camera not being on for some no, reason at X. You are fine, so. Ms. Brooklyn. Um, if you have to have discussions about this, just let me know, okay? Okay, thank just you so much for your time and consideration. To, to the argument. So, all right, enjoy school today. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, Oh, good Lord. I'm muted. All right. We ran out of video, is all I said. I, I didn't know. <laughs> that was wild. I thought this was going to be 10 minutes. But the, but the judge was in a mood to just have this discussion. <laughs> oh, oh, that was that was painful. That was delicious, though. I mean, you just you just set the thing for trial, deny his motions, and and uh, and let him get whacked. That, that, that's that's how you do it. But this was more fun. This was more fun. 
Judge, I can't believe she's entertaining this nonsense. It's it's his burden to to bring a cogent argument. He didn't. The judge doesn't need to entertain uh, all your random musings. You have to put it in writing ahead of time. And it has to make some sense. <laughs> <clears throat> it's it's fine if it's at the end of the call and you've got some time and you and you feel like batting them around. That's okay. But really, this could be dealt with by saying uh, you don't have any motions pending. Your case is now set for March 5th or whatever it is. And I'll see you there. That that's all. That's all that needs to, needs doing. But th this this was more fun watch watching this guy <laughs> do a soft sit dance out there. All right, all right. I threw this on. I've got bedhead. I th I thought it would be ten minutes. Where are we now? We're at over an hour. <laughs> Thank you all for coming out. We even had a visit from Deborah Davis, which is always awesome. Thank you all for coming out. I'll see y'all soon.